So Thunderbolt 4 is coming, and even if you don't actually have any Thunderbolt devices, this is still going to be relevant to you. So if you don't know what Thunderbolt is, it's Intel's protocol, sort of like USB. It's a data transfer protocol. You know, the cables, you buy a USB cable, you buy a Thunderbolt cable, you use a th USB port, there's a Thunderbolt port, that sort of thing. And Intel just released the new spec for the new version of it. You may also know that USB 4 is coming out. And what's interesting is USB 4 is actually built on Thunderbolt 3 protocol. And that's because Intel last year, I believe, actually made Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 3 and, and Thunderbolt 4 op uh, not open source necessarily, but royalty free. So basically, Anyone can create a Thunderbolt cable as long as it gets certified and then they don't get charged per cable they make or something like that. So it makes it a lot cheaper for manufacturers to add to their computers, which obviously improves adoption. So obviously Thunderbolt being a pretty good protocol, USB, who the USB, uh, I forget what they're called, the people that create the specs for USB said, yeah, we're going to use Thunderbolt then because it's pretty superior. And now Thunderbolt 4 and USB Four are both based on Thunderbolt, but Thunderbolt 4 is the newer version, whereas, like I mentioned, USB 4 is based on Thunderbolt 3. So USB 4 actually, or Thunderbolt 4 actually has additional features. So we'll get into that. This is the press deck that Intel released, and we'll get into this in a second. We can start with the Verge article talking about Thunderbolt 4. And if you didn't know, Thunderbolt now uses USB-C connectors exclusively. So we mentioned here already that Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 are kind of based on the same Thunderbolt protocol. So here's one of the main benefits, which I'm actually excited about, is basically Thunderbolt 4 cables, which you'll know is a Thunderbolt 4 cable because it'll actually have the Thunderbolt and then a 4 on it, will basically be able to replace any other cable for USB or Thunderbolt. So you can see here it is shown as an example. All of these are still USB-C, which is literally just the physical connection. That's all USB-C describes. It doesn't describe the speed. So you have all these things that are USB-C, but they might have different protocols like USB 3.2, different speeds of 3.2, and then there's USB 4 at different speeds. Now, if you wanted to, you could literally just go out and buy a Thunderbolt 4 cable, even if you don't have any Thunderbolt devices. That's one main point I wanna make, which is makes this so exciting, is even me, who I don't even really use or have any Thunderbolt Thunderbolt devices, say I want to make sure that I have the maximum speed for any USB cable that I'm getting and I want to future proof it, I can just go out and say, all right, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to get a Thunderbolt 4 cable and not even have to think about it. Of course, that might be a little bit more expensive than getting a USB cable, especially because all Thunderbolt cables have to be certified by Intel apparently, which is going to increase the cost. But still, you might be willing to pay for that if you're getting it for one particular device that is kind of a device you use all the time that's high end and you know it does require the actual full spec. So here we talk about some more features. Thunderbolt 4 computers will have to support either two 4K displays or one 8K display along with PCIe transfer speeds of up to 32 gigabits per second, all double the minimum requirements from Thunderbolt 3. So this is saying basically that Intel is gonna work with PC manufacturers and if that PC manufacturer wants to have a Thunderbolt port on it, then it will actually have to have the hardware requirements, a certain number of hardware requirements. Because say you go and buy a PC that you buy one laptop and it supports Thunderbolt 4, but maybe it can't actually have enough uh, graphics power to output to an 8K display. Then your friend has a Thunderbolt uh, PC that does have more graphics power and he can run the 8K display. And you're like saying, they're both Thunderbolt, why can't my computer run this display? And you might blame Thunderbolt, that's the kind of thing. They just wanna make it consistent where if you just are using Thunderbolt in the first place, doesn't matter what cable it is, uh, well, it does matter what cable it is. As long as you're using Thunderbolt and you have the latest cable, it'll support a certain number of features, including external hardware, such as displays. So we say with the new standard, and this is another point here, with the new standard, manufacturers of thin and light laptops that need less than 100 watts of power to charge will also be required to offer Thunderbolt 4 based USB-C charging on at least one port. So this is also saying that even laptop manufacturers that use less than 100 watts of power and will be wanting to use Thunderbolt ports on it. They say that, all right, if you wanna have a Thunderbolt port on your laptop, you are required to make sure that that Thunderbolt port will be able to charge the PC. So that's again, just consistency. And then we also have basically what we said here 
alts being rolled into one. So everything with a Thunderbolt port works exactly as you'd expect, no complexity or confusion. So they're talking about fragmented world of standard USB-C cables, which I've talked about in previous videos. But of course the downside is that Thunderbolt cables and accessories cost far more than regular USB-C devices due to this, those hard, higher hardware requirements and of course probably the certification costs. And here's a correction down here. Uh, Intel says that it does not charge royalty or licensing fees for Thunderbolt specification. It doesn't mention anything about certification, so I'm assuming certification does cost money. And the company says it will continue to be the case going forward with Thunderbolt 4 too. So yes, there is no uh, royalty charges. And also, you may have been wondering, apparently there was some confusion because Intel basically said that uh, Thunderbolt will work on Intel, all Intel devices or something along those lines. And people were wondering if that would apply, that would mean that Mac devices, which in the future are gonna be using Apple Silicon CPUs, wouldn't support Thunderbolt, but Apple said that no, they will still use Thunderbolt because Apple did actually work with Intel to create the Thunderbolt protocol. So obviously they would wanna be supported and a lot of Macs already use Thunderbolt. And I think it's in a lot of workflows in terms of hardware, like backup drives, stuff like that, all use Thunderbolt. So Apple would definitely not wanna stop supporting Thunderbolt. So we can go through this press deck for anything else interesting. Basically you see here that Thunderbolt 4 certification includes USB 4 testing. And we'll get to that in a second. Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 products. So this is where they're gonna talk about how Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 are related. Again, they are based on the Thunderbolt 4 protocol. The Thunderbolt 4 will offer the most complete version of USB-C and will require be required with a superset of capabilities not required by USB 4 is the main point I wanna focus on here. And that basically means that Thunderbolt 4 will be able to do everything USB 4 can do and more, which is kind of going back to saying, if you wanna buy something that just works all together with USB 4, you can buy a Thunderbolt 4 cable if you want. What's new with Thunderbolt 4? So we already kind of talked about this support for two 4K displays and one 8K display. And if you buy a device that supports Thunderbolt 4, it's gonna be able to do these. It doesn't matter. It doesn't just mean that the cable will be able to do up to that. It says that it will be a minimum that any computer using Thunderbolt 4 will be able to actually do 4K displays or an 8K display. Also PCIe, at 32 gigabits per second. Uh, it's a minimum and expanded end-to-end -end solution capability. So accessories with up to four Thunderbolt ports. So they're just basically saying there's gonna be these little hubs, you can have four of them. Universal 40 gigabit cables up to two meters in length. So that is improved, we'll get to that in a second. Require PC charging, we already talked about that. There's also some other little stuff like PC wake from sleep and uh, some Intel virtualization direct memory access, which actually is a reason I believe why the Microsoft Surface is not gonna be using Thunderbolt because they don't like that it has direct memory access. I don't know much about that, but that's an interesting fun fact. And this is also comparing it to USB 4. The Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 3 both support up to 40 gigabits per second. USB 4, again, this is just going back to the complexity of it, where you could buy a USB 4 cable that supports 20 gigabits per second, but you have to specifically go out and get one if it's USB 4 that you want for 40 gigabits per second. So again, just having to worry about all these different ones. Same idea right here. We know, look at all these different symbols that you could possibly have for USB-C and all of these are, they don't really explain much. This stand, the SS stands for super speed and super speed is like the original, I think USB 2.0. So it's not even super speed anymore. Finally, they started adding little symbols that's like 5, 10, 20 that shows the actual gigabit speed. This is display port. Basically, again, you can just get a, US, a Thunderbolt 4, which is probably the main draw, honestly, for me. I'm not even gonna use Thunderbolt 4 exclusively, just use it to get everything out of USB 4. Oh, this is a good one to look at. So. Basically, this is the comparison between Thunderbolt, not just Thunderbolt 3, but also USB 4, all in one chart. So we can see the minimum PC speed requirements. So this is the minimum, 4K, blah, blah, blah. You can just look at this if you want, you can pause it. I'm not gonna go through every single cell in here. These are the docs I was talking about and different ways you can daisy chain things. You might already know that you can daisy chain Thunderbolt devices, which is always nice. This is the cables. I was talking about the cable lengths. So before, to get the full speed, you would need, obviously, if you, as you get a longer cable, it's harder to get the maximum speed. So I believe even Thunderbolt 3, there was a maximum 
uh, cable length that was not very long. Now you'll be able to have two meters, which is like s around six feet. And they're targeting five to 50 meters of Thunderbolt 4 cables that would support it just by the nature of the compatibility would have to support all the features again that we talked about and be that long. So that's going to be pretty awesome. And then they're saying that they will basically be first launching in Thunderbolt 3 with Tiger Lake CPUs coming out uh, later this year. So that's pretty much it. We can go over the summary right here. Intel introduces blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're not going to go through the marketing speak here. It builds upon Thunderbolt 3. We already know that. And yeah, all right. So nothing we don't know already. Basically, Thunderbolt 4, if you didn't already know, it's coming. I, if you want to see my video talking about USB 4, this is the name of it. If you can just search it, I'll probably put the link in the description on my main channel. I'm kind of excited about Thunderbolt 4. Literally just because I don't want to have to think about buying cables sometimes. I have a huge box of cables. You should see it, which is basically just every possible cable because every time I'm missing one, I go out and buy like five of them so I never have to worry about it again. And this way, maybe going forward, I could just start buying Thunderbolt 4 cables if I don't want to worry about the cost and just have them all. So I think that covers it. I don't want to drone too long on this video. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know down in the comments, are you going to buy these cables? Are you just going to save the money and buy the cheap Chinese USB cables that are maybe not certified, whatever? We can get into that down there. So I'll see you in the next video, guys.